We've got all creatures, great and small, on airline today. Party animals are on the loose in Chicago. When they're that rowdy going to a football game, it's nice to have a door that you can close. There's something wild prowling the terminal. I want to know where there's a tiger at my gate. And it's quite a different animal in L.A. But I was told that his genitals were exposed. allow animals to fly only in exceptional circumstances, but the airport often resembles a zoo. It's Friday afternoon in Chicago, and for these party animals, the weekend has started early. Hi! We're going to San Diego. To San Diego. To watch the Packers beat the Chargers. Exactly. It's so much fun and the trip is so much enjoyable. The flights are great. Everybody's happy. You can't beat it. You just can't beat it. The fans might be having a ball, but the coaches on the sidelines are keeping an eye on them. We have the potential for a situation um, that could arise with this group, so we're going to have to kind of monitor their behavior. It could get a little confrontational if, if the group is large enough and they've been drinking long enough. Go back, go. Go back, go. <laughs> They're just party animals. Green Bay Packer party animals. I think there's uh, 59 or 60 of them. I don't know how many of them are in the bar right well, now. They're just getting a little loud and boisterous, and on, so we're just going to have to watch and see. If the rowdy cheeseheads are too intoxicated to fly, Run, a penalty flag will be thrown and 60 fans will not make the game. I called for backup. <laughs> <laughs> In San Diego, flight attendants Sam and Janie prepare for their flight to Chicago. All I hear is that there's somebody by the name of Penny and Pete. Pete and Penny are And I don't know who they are or what makes them think they're so special. <laughs> oh, is that who's riding with me? <laughs> yeah. There well, they are. Penny. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they cute? Is this Peter Penny? This is Pete. Hi, Pete. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> I've never flown with penguins before. I've had yeah. nuns on my flights, but never any, any real penguins. <laughs> And it's just a, is it a fundraiser that you do tonight in Chicago? Um, no, is it we're, that you we're do? actually, we, we have the night off, but then tomorrow we're going to go visit one of your partner schools. And we're going to go oh, talk to the Sam. kids down there. Got so it. we're going to meet them and then fly home. It's right at the bottom. This is yours. And then Pete, this is yours. You want to hold that? Put the bloopers out, just like that. <laughs> Pete and Penny are from San Diego's SeaWorld and are frequent flyers, visiting schools all across the country. You may notice that we have a camera crew with us today. You may be thinking it's because we have penguins on the plane today, but you are absolutely wrong. Southwest Airlines is doing a program about businessmen who cheat on their wives while they're out of town. <laughs> if you feel you need to have a cigarette, you can step out onto the wing. If you can light it, you can smoke it. We'll be showing Gone with the Wind and Blown Away today out on the wing. It's our pleasure having you with us this afternoon. Welcome aboard. At LAX, Yolanda enjoys some local creature comforts. So cool. Look at you. Hi. Oh, he's friendly, too. I didn't think they were this friendly. <laughs> You're trying to kiss me. That's the first kiss I had in months. Yeah, that was a finely trained animal a few minutes ago, but now. Oh, look. <laughs> Look at you. Now you ruined them. Here, you might as well take them. Uh, well, they're all dogs, but not as nice as this one, you know? <laughs> I'll see you later. Bad boy, bad boy. Back in Chicago, the merry band of cheeseheads continue their celebration. Go back! them to think that, you know, 
that we're giving them a bum rap right off the, rap, off the, the beginning. I just want to give them a fair chance and let them know that they probably won't get on if they're going to continue drinking. This is just getting louder and louder. As far as the fans are concerned, they'll soon be on their way. Well, I'm not sure how the crew's gonna feel about some of them. Some of them were pretty loud and boisterous. So right now, the supervisor's at the gate monitoring the situation, and we're just gonna see what happens in the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Okay, if they're denied boarding, we're gonna have to put them on the next departure, which leaves at 5.55, if they're fit for travel. I'm gonna head over, V. You coming? Will these Packer fans make it to the end zone? It looks doubtful. Back in Chicago, the flight crew will umpire the decision to let the fans fly. They're allowed to board and make their way to the Packers showdown in San Diego. Go Pack! Hey, go Pack, go Pack. I would hate, though, to deny one of them boarding because I, you can see that it would have been, it would have been, it would have caused chaos. I think it was um, handled really well. The customers actually um, were fine. We weren't looking forward to pulling them off anyway. They're loud. They weren't so loud in the, out there in the uh, gate area, so when they came down the jetway, I was like, oh, word. When they're that rowdy going to a football game, it's nice to have a door that you can close. Shut up! And there's only so much beer on the plane, so it's got to end. <laughs> San Diego, beware. The cheeseheads are coming. At a cruising altitude of 30,000 feet, the seatbelt sign is turned off, and Pete and Penny can stretch their wings. Hi, Penny, how you doing? I love them. <laughs> There's a lot of cameras on <laughs> It's soft, it's furry. I wish I could see it. It, uh, it feels adorable. Pretty now. There we are. <laughs> People who sit in an office all day. What suckers. <laughs> At LAX, Yolanda has been called to gate five following reports of a passenger's rather strange display. Are you sure that he doesn't have any pants at all on, or is it? I was told that his genitals were exposed, so I'm here and I'm going to try to figure out who he is and call him up, and that'll give me an opportunity to see him stand and hopefully deal with him. Okay. Has the plane landed yet? Sir, can you come with me? I just need to ask you a question. For those passengers who are still waiting for Just right over here. Yeah, would you mind stepping over with me just for a second? I'm a supervisor for Southwest Airlines. Basically, the passengers felt uncomfortable. Okay, they had noticed something just a little different within the passenger. It looked like that he wasn't wearing any undergarments on, that he was in decent exposure exposing a little bit of his private parts, and they said he kind of had his legs open, just not really caring at all. I mean, and it's a lot of kids running around here, and they don't need to see that. I mean, it's just too much. So they just didn't really feel comfortable with that person being on the flight. There was a couple of passengers that had some concerns about your genitals being exposed, and, no, no, and no, that, no. so you're wearing shorts or something <laughs> under that? Please no, tell me. That's not true. I mean, if they... Okay. So, I had three I different passengers, so I had to uh, come yeah, and yeah. investigate it because I have to determine whether or not with the complaints if I can go ahead and allow you on board. So yeah, if you have yeah, something underneath, do. you do. Okay, thank you. All right. Yolanda still doesn't have the answer she needs. 
I'm not certain as to whether or not he has something on under the velour kilt skirt type situation. But obviously, I can't ask him to lift it up. So it's going to be one of those things where he said he did. The other two passengers said he absolutely doesn't have anything on me. So I'm kind of between that. It's going to be a situation where I have to kind of watch and unfortunately try to see what I can see, for lack of a better phrase. I mean, I don't know. V and Sandy meet a four-legged passenger on a stopover in Chicago. Oh, Sandy's walking one of the customers um, who's seen impaired. She's walking his dog so that he can um, take a potty break. His name's Higgins. Some of our customers, they flew in earlier, and they have a two-hour layover here in Chicago, and they're taking a flight to San Diego, which is a long flight, so. They asked if we could possibly take him out. So we can go to the bathroom. He's a yellow lab, and he's a cis dog. He's a cis animal. For his owner's visually impaired, we're just going to help him out and take him out on our ramp to use the bathroom. Oh. Well, that was quick. That's all he needed to do? I don't know. We'll see. Oh. Good boy, Higgins. Park it. His owner had told me that the command for him to use the restroom is park it. So he said just continue to say park it, and if he's got to go, he'll go. I mean, he did right immediately when we walked out, but I'm not sure if that's all he has to do. What do you think, Higgins? Is that it? Are you done? Higgins, park it. Hey, when you got to go, you got to go. Here's your one. No, I don't think so. I don't have a dog. Good boy, Whoa, well, I'll be. I guess one of those things you got to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Higgins's command performance gets him back on board. People will ask me, how does he fly? I go after a couple martinis, he's great. <laughs> you know, I mean, he does, you know, he's a great flyer. <laughs> Back in L.A., Yolanda shares her insights with a colleague. That they said that you can see his genitals. He's wearing like a little velour miniskirt. And <laughs> don't look like that. It's hard enough to keep a straight face. He calls it a kilt. It's like a little black velour miniskirt type thing. Hold on. Are you ready for that one? Hold on. Yeah. And the other passenger said that they could see his genitals, that he wasn't wearing anything under it. When I went over there, he stood up. I couldn't tell. He told me he had something on under it, but I couldn't tell because he didn't move in a way where I could tell if he was exposed or hanging loose or whatever you want to call it. So he's on this flight, um, and we kind of, I kind of have to watch him because obviously, if he doesn't have anything on under that, he can't go because it's like a mini skirt. Okay. Okay. okay thank you. She calls a manager to see what sort of procedure fits this unique situation. Okay, so just tell him that he needs to put something else on if he wants to travel. Oh, where did he go? Okay. Okay. But our kilted friend has vanished, and Yolanda knows she needs to find him. Yeah, I don't see him. Uh, I think I lost him. Pete and Penny arrive at Midway to a fanfare fit for a celebrity. They're ready to go to Chicago. Uh, we'll try this. This will be fun. Oh, so cute. It's great. Hello. Hi, baby. OK. Hi. 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 Do you know each other? Look at that. Yeah. I'm looking at a penguin. Nestled in their luxury accommodation, the VIP treatment continues. Room service. Hi. Come on in. It's dinner time. Go ahead. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. <gasps> Yum. They'll soak up the star treatment tonight, but tomorrow it's back to work.
At LAX, Yolanda spots the skirt-wearing passenger across the terminal. Sir, excuse me, excuse me. I'm sorry to bug you again, sorry. but I just had to speak to a, a man, another manager about the situation. Uh -huh. If you're going to travel on Southwest, we're going to have to have you put something else on. Do you have something to change into? <laughs> Sir, do you want to just take a minute and change? Why am I being harassed? Well, it's not an issue stuff. of harassment, sir. There, there are a couple of, sorry, there are a couple of the passengers that that felt like you were de indecently exposed in what you're wearing. That they're saying that there's nothing under your kilt, or and that we're going to have to ask you to put something something on. I don't think that's. I don't think that's appropriate, you know. Yeah. I mean, what do I have to do? Do I have to show well, you no, my underwear? Well, no, no, no. You don't. You don't do have I, to. Do I, no, you don't is. need to show me your underwear, sir. Okay. Well. You don't then, need to. But you know if if the sh if the kilt is short enough to expose yourself when you sit down, then that's something that. Ma'am, you have to you have to tell everybody who's wearing a skirt or a kilt. This ain't right. Okay, the only way, though, you're going to be able to travel, and I've already spoke to another manager about it, is to, to put something else on, and I'm sorry. But what if I had not had a pair of blue jeans? Then I would actually go out of my way to try to find you something to yeah. put on. And even if I wasn't wearing anything underneath, what difference would it make? Does somebody go around and ask you if you're wearing underwear? Well, Whether no, but if... Whether you're wearing a skirt or a dress or anything, right? Do but they? But if, if they Do sit... They? If I'm in a public place and I sit down and they can see my so. private parts, then yeah, they have a right if they're going to fly me on their airplane to tell me that's not okay. You got to put right. some short, do you have shorts this that you, is, you can wear? Right. Do you have shorts this that you can right wear? That I, I'm being harassed. I'm sorry, I'm, harassed. I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I'm you got because, you know what, I can, I'm going to sue. Oh, I'm well. sorry. And I need to know your name. Would you I'll write give your name you, yeah, when you come out, I'll give you okay. everything. Okay. Okay. Threatening legal action is fine, but first things first, better find something to wear on the plane. At Chicago, something strange is on the loose inside the terminal. Oh, yeah, I see that. That's cool. There you go. I want to know where there's a tiger at my gate. How are you doing? Why are you dressed up as a tiger? Oh, whatever reason you want to come up with. For a tiger? Any reason you want. Any reason. Any reason. Okay. I think he's an entertainer, especially with the guitar. Or he could just be looking for attention, because <laughs> he sure got it. <laughs> Your tiger face. Will anyone solve the big cat mystery? He had no, he had no particular reason why he wanted to be dressed up like that. The only conclusion we could come to possibly is a performer. He's on his way to a hospital or something to entertain, but we don't know for sure, and he didn't give me an answer. So I respect his privacy. and. It might have been the warmest thing I had in my closet, right? And maybe I wasn't prepared for the weather here. But maybe not. I don't know. He doesn't have stripes. Brian, copy Brian. Leverett Smith dons a pair of jeans for his flight, but he's not done yet. I mean, I understand and your concern, indecent, but you have to understand. Do you know, do you know the definition of indecent exposure? It's a deliberate, willful, and a lascivious manner to expose yourself in public. It's not by a woman walking down the street who has no underwear on or anything and the wind blows her skirt up or whatever she's wearing or dress. It's not considered indecent exposure, so you're way off base. Well, what I'm saying to you is they felt like no, you were indecently exposed. I didn't say that you, you were. So, you know, they, you know the, if they the, can see your private yeah. parts when you, you sit down, that's a problem. Ma'am, you know what? I just, you, I don't, you don't even sorry. know the definition of a law. I'm not it's saying like, you broke a law, sir. I'm just saying that in order to travel, this is what we needed to have happen. I've traveled I'm on sorry. Southwest Airlines for the last five years like this, and I've never yeah. had a problem. Suitably dressed, he heads home to Albuquerque to slip into something a little more comfortable. Oh, Megan, what's going on with, with the, the tiger? We really haven't found out <laughs> what's going on. He's going to Detroit, though. 
Do you know what's going on with them? No. Back at Midway, the tiger mystery continues. Good, how are you doing? Good. Flying out to Detroit today? Yes, I am. Yeah. So we got a tiger in our tank today? Yeah. Uh -huh. Just kind of curious as to why. I can't give you an answer. Oh, OK. Just decided to do it. Just... What's wrong? Is life art, or is art life? Yeah. You live? Uh, Look, keep on living, I guess, huh? But you say you're not going to divulge any information on why you have it on, either. Huh? There's no information to divulge about it, really. Oh, OK. <laughs> OK, have a good flight. <laughs> Okay. Rockstar here. So. <laughs> here you go. Give him a show while you're on there, right? Well, that was good. Passengers unfit for travel. Tears flow over a new family member. I don't know what to do. A customer breaks down in Los Angeles. The paramedics came, they couldn't even bring her to. And there's trouble in store in Baltimore. Did I say that? Because that didn't come out of my mouth, did it? of travel isn't all that easy. You have to remain sober no matter how nervous you are. And sometimes you just can't take everything with you. In Chicago, Val has found a passenger with just that problem. Patty Miller has some rather unusual cargo. Real chicken, look at that. You can't take them like this. Oh my God. This would leak all over the baggage in the area. We can't take it. Can we put tape? We can't take it. Well, I used to do it many years I ago. I know, but things have changed. Yes, since President Bush. <laughs> I want my chickens to come home. I want to eat. I want to eat fresh chicken. There's um, fresh chickens there, not frozen solid. If we ship meat, it's got to be frozen solid. And then they're in a cooler that'll leak with ice in it. It wouldn't make it there. But we can't do it. In Baltimore, Gina is also dealing with a forbidden carry-on. Rosemary George has been visiting relatives and has a new addition to her family, Snuggles the puppy. We don't transport animals, ma'am, without proper documentation. The vet said it'd be okay. <laughs> I guess the vet didn't know our policy, unfortunately. I don't see why they just can't let me carry them. All he does is sleep. I'm not gonna bother anybody. They won't let me take this little puppy in this on the plane. We just don't accept animals unless we have pro proper documentation. But no one told me this. Hey, That's not hey, new. No, actually, it's been enforced since we've been flying 32 years. Well, I can't leave without my dog. Back in Chicago, Patty explains why she won't eat frozen chickens. I can't eat them because they, they put them in Clorox and they stay about two, three weeks. By the time they set up, they're sick. They're sick. I advise everybody not to eat them. <laughs> but she's only allowed to take frozen chickens in dry ice. Unfortunately, I would have everybody whose luggage was under there with that that would be completely destroyed when they got to the, their destination. Guess the chickens won't be flying anywhere today. Mama, put them on FedEx! 
But Patty's still baffled. It's funny to tell me now, dry eyes many years ago. Now I put soft eyes, they don't accept the soft eyes. <laughs> uh, can I see your boarding pass, man? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel so horrible. Joe Williams just arrived in Chicago on business, but he's ended up in the baggage service office. But I'm missing two sets of keys and also a small magnifying glass, which is of much less importance. Okay, what flight did you just go? 2093 from St. Louis. Let me contact the ramp soup. Sure. Let him know to see if he can check the aircraft for you. One had about 12 keys and one had four. Hey, we're looking for two sets of keys that came off uh, flight uh, 2093. A passenger's here in regards to it. Joe had too many carry-on bags, and one of them had to be checked. Uh, it's the last time that I part with my luggage, even if I end up not getting the flight. I mean, when I have personal things, I mean, it, it, I don't know. Right. I, I'm There's a box living. and a garment bag. Sir, um, what time was the last time you seen your keys, sir? Saw them. Pardon? Saw them. Yes. The keys were in the bag. No, I understand, but what was the time of the flight? Earlier today. Okay. And one of the sets of keys was what I used to drive to the airport at which I parked. While the ramp agents search for Joe's keys, he checks his bags one more time. He finds the magnifying glass, but not the keys. It's one of those things, they confiscated my bag because they didn't have room for it on the plane, although it's as light a carry-on as you can imagine. Here I'm in this wretched city of Chicago. I have no keys for Chicago whatsoever. Back in Baltimore, Gina is standing her ground on the no animals policy. But I cannot let you fly with that dog today. And I'm sorry if I'm inconveniencing you. Yeah, yeah. I know. And I apologize for that. No, I don't want to do it. Don't cry. It makes me mad. My in-laws bought a dog at the same place, and they took her up to look at their dog. She saw that one and fell in love with it. She bought it. Gina tries to find an alternative to the Rosemary and Snuggles dilemma. Not good news. I talked to the manager, and this is all he could give me. This is to fly U.S. Airways to just put the animal on board. Um, you're going to need a health certificate from the vet, and it can't be more than 10 days old. You're going to have to have an FAA-approved carrier, and it's going to be $170. This just makes it worse. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. Joe still hasn't found his keys. Without them, his business trip is wasted. Awilda is trying to help. When you're traveling, just make sure you have your keys with you at all times. You think I can carry three sets of keys all the time with me? I understand it would be inconveniencing for you to go ahead and... Mm -hmm. well. And it would be inconveniencing you for having to carry those keys with you? Uh, I beg your pardon? You're trying to tell me what to carry with me as opposed, look, as it is, I moved a great many personal items that were not replaceable from the object that they confiscated to my other bag that I had with me. I could not, in the process, move everything. In order to move everything, I would have had to take the bag that they had confiscated with me. I don't know if you can understand that. I happen to carry multiple sets of keys for multiple reasons all the time, and no, it would not be convenient for me to carry them on my person all the time, no. Awilda has employed the help of co-worker Janine to track down the lost so, keys. Uh, she's going to try to um, contact the following city that the aircraft goes to in the event that the keys probably slid into um, some compartment there so that they can double check the aircraft. I would be willing to guess, just to guess, that they came out between the time they were removed from the plane and the time that I picked up the bag in the carousel. In Baltimore, flying another airline may be expensive, but if Rosemary is going to get Snuggles home, it's her only option. And now, they have another problem. I, I don't know what their FAA, you know, carrier entitles. I'm going to take this down to baggage service. See if she said it's unaccept this is unacceptable, and they don't have any to accommodate it. So I got to go break the 
bad news again. Okay. U.S. Airways says that the bottom of it needs to be hard. It's not an approved FAA <laughs> can carry. The bottom needs to be hard just in case that animal urinates. It's got to have the steel hard um, bars. Mm -hmm. If it urinates, it'll come right through. It's got to be a hard. <laughs> they do, though. Come on. I'm sorry. What's this going for? An hour ride. I know, ma'am. I'm not leaving the dog behind. I just want you to get the whole picture before you make I a decision the whole like picture. that. I'll never fly Southwest. I, and I am again. sorry about that. And I'm no, sorry for inconveniencing you. There's nothing wrong with him going on the airplane. All he does is sleep. In Chicago, the search for Joe's keys switches to St. Louis, where he came from. Doing a double check for you at the gates now. Okay. Just to make sure they didn't fall out before you boarded where they uh, oh, no were. way. Well, I think there's no way. I mean, how can I know? I can't know. I mean, you know, it may have had nothing to do with the fact that... Uh, we are looking to find you. One of them has about a dozen keys on there. The other has about four. We much need them. Oh, oh of course. Thank you so much. Luggage. Oh, really? I thought they fell out of my luggage because really? I had my keys in it. First thing I said, why did I put my keys in this one? Camera. <laughs> <laughs> that one has to be All somewhere. right, you thank you. The, the other is much less relevant. I mean, the other is much, but that's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> now I'm still missing one little keychain, but that's a relatively minor matter. It may mean that I won't be able to uh, get into my car when I get back to St. Louis, but. Who, who needs to get into his car or his apartment? Really irrelevant, so. Oh, I'm feeling great. I mean, at least greater. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's like uh, if you get malaria and you get a little bit better, you feel great. You would have been better if you had never had the malaria. In Baltimore, time is running out and Rosemary's getting desperate. No way I can sneak them on. Can't do that. I could um, put him on another flight. It cost me um, $400. I don't have that. She's got to make a fast decision in order to make her flight. Leave today without snuggles or come back tomorrow with a regulation carrier. Rush you? I know. But I got three minutes if I'm going to check your luggage. Okay, on the 455 flight. It looks as though Snuggles will stay in Baltimore for now. I feel bad, but I mean, there's nothing that, you know, I could have done. I, she wanted me to sneak it on board. There's no way, you know, we could do something like that. I mean, it's an unfortunate situation. I feel bad, but for the best that I could. Although Rosemary heads home alone, she'll be reunited with Snuggles next month when her daughter comes for a visit. Upstairs, Nicholas has been called to gate B-13. There's a group of unhappy passengers trying to get to Cleveland. This is our party right here. They're all connecting passengers on a delayed flight from Providence, but their beef is that the flight to Cleveland left early. The flight didn't leave early. The flight was scheduled to depart at 6.45. It left on time. I was You're here telling me about the ticket. You told us on the airline. We're here on time. It's 10 minutes. It's off the ground at 6.56. I'm 70 years old. We weren't told that our flight had already left. So we were running. We had a a long way to come and we got here we felt right on time and I understand you guys are upset and I do apologize I, w I'm, I wasn't there to know what the flight attendant said I wasn't all I know is what what happened here well you asked at, me what happened six, I told you that's no, what and started I, and that's what I appreciate your feedback that's that will help me in making a better decision of what I need to do it don't seem like the logic is there. I, I'm not still understanding why they couldn't have held this flight because we were here at 645. Outside at LAX, there's a passenger who's been denied boarding. 
She's caught the eye of Bronwyn, who recalls meeting her. So about two days ago, we got a telephone call for a supervisor that somebody was smoking in the gate area. So we went up there, and Christine was up there. She was very obviously very intoxicated, using profanities, things like that. Christine DeHart has been dropped off by her boyfriend and is on her way to Oklahoma. I'm ready today to go. He already bought the ticket last week. We called the, for the local police because she was just so out of it. And before they even showed up, she um, actually passed out. So they called the paramedics. When the paramedics came, they couldn't even bring her to. So we, we booked it for the 8th, which is what, next Thursday? But I want to go today. It's already paid for, and they're not letting me go on. Yeah, it's a little bit disturbing. We were kind of wondering what happened to her, so when I saw her outside, I was kind of like, well, I'm, I'm glad she's okay. Although her ticket isn't for a few days, Christine has come back to try her luck on standby, but so far without success. Are you okay? Yeah. yeah. They were very worried about you. The paramedics, they couldn't even wake you up or anything. Right now I'm okay. I. Yes. You're trying to get to Tulsa, right? I, I am. Okay, well, I can go try to look that up. Can I go with you? Yeah, well, let me, I'm going to go in the back oh, office, right actually. Bronwyn checks availability on the next flight. Back at Midway's baggage service office, with the most important set of keys found, the atmosphere is somewhat lighter. Well, I'm just waiting in case the other keys turn off. I don't really much care, but I kind of like the ambiance here. They said that they were having somebody check the immediate area in case they could locate them right away. The search doesn't take long. The gentleman did look on the conveyor belt. He did not see that those keys there. Yeah. Okay, so like well, I told if her. If you ever was... find them, let me know. Yes. And if not, well, I'll never get into my car or my apartment, but in St. Louis it doesn't matter. Everybody, you know, lives so open. Good luck to all of you. Have a nice Have one, a nice sir. Day. After a rather long evening in baggage claim, Joe leaves with one set of keys, just not his car and house keys. In this case, probably when they put the bags on the on the cart, what happened is that the zipper probably, when they pulled it off the aircraft, the zipper opened a little and just fell on somebody's bag. And I'm glad that gentleman came in here with the keys. Back in Baltimore, Nicholas tries to get the full story about the incoming flight from Providence. That plane left early. Why don't you just admit it? I because mean, I'm not seriously? going to admit something that's not true. And I'm sorry that you feel that way. Our plane was an hour late leaving, or coming into Providence. Therefore, we were an hour and a half late leaving. And when we questioned them and said, hey, we're going to be, you know, we're going to miss our flight. What can we do? They said, oh, don't worry about it. You're going to make it. I fly a lot, an hour and a half. You're not going to make it. As soon as we got off the plane, we looked at the departure, and they hadn't even changed that. That still said 645. Yeah, it, it, That's right why we departure. ran. Common courtesy would have been just to hold the flight. If it you had seven it's paid customers. You can hear it. Instead of waiting for a 645 flight, I understand that. You understand what you didn't do. And I do apologize. That was not our decision to make locally. When we got to the gate, this gentleman here got to the gate early. He got here maybe three minutes before, you know, takeoff, and the plane was gone. Okay, I, I do apologize. Uh, I found out why it is your flight was delayed. It was delayed earlier in the day because there was a, a maintenance issue on the back lavatory. It wasn't functioning, so it took it took about an, an hour delay or less than an hour delay, and they've been trying to catch up with it all day. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to hold the aircraft to Cleveland, and I do apologize about that. You guys have already actually been rebooked on the 9.30 flight, and um, I can give you guys some meal vouchers if you guys needed anything. You're giving me the food voucher. I don't want you think, oh, okay, we have satisfied another customer. Absolutely, I don't think that. Did I say that? Because that didn't come out of my mouth, did it? <laughs> no, it didn't. I have to pay a nanny to spend the night now. I've got to uh, pay an extra day in the parking. So this is going to end up costing me $100 for their delay. Yet they're giving me $12 in a hot dog voucher. At LAX, Christine awaits an answer about the Tulsa flight. I hope I get on that plane because I hit LA. Hi, uh, my name's Rowan. I work for Southwest, and we're trying to take care of Christine here. And she said you had a new number that has the money in it. It's sold out, and Bronwyn checks to see if she can transfer her ticket without an additional payment. I'm going to go ahead and um, just overbook the flight for you, get you on the flight going from here to Vegas, and then you'll go ahead and change <laughs> planes in Vegas and get to Tulsa tonight at okay. about 11.25. I feel happy. Thank you. <laughs> and then 
good attitude. She actually got me in a flight. It's good. The other person didn't do that for me. It's good. <laughs> it's my good out of LA. <laughs> I know you've been crying a little bit, so just maybe go in the restroom and you boy you get mascara's got a little hot on. No, so. it's cuckoo, cuckoo. But just you know, yeah. woman to woman. Just go touch yourself up and you'll be good. Okay. And then uh, gate number thirteen for boarding. Head up there right now because they should be leaving in about thirty minutes. Okay, so where did I go first? So um, I went ahead and you know as a courtesy just overbooked the flight, got her a seat on it and um, just get her on her way to to Tulsa. I think she, something bad must have happened to her here. She keeps saying that she doesn't like Los Angeles, so maybe she's had a bad experience just to you know send her home. Back in Baltimore, Nicholas gets through to Providence. So as you guys said, they were initially told that they wouldn't make that connection. Okay, yeah, they're, they're very upset. Okay, I'll take care of it here then. That's okay, thank you. Bye. She okay, to it. I just spoke to the supervisor in Providence. At that time, she did state that how it was your flight was going to get in at six or nine, which would have still given you sufficient time to connect here in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And at that point in time, she didn't follow up with it, and she didn't realize the flight had left later than expected. And she, she just admitted that she did drop the ball on that, and she apologizes, and I apologize. I can offer you guys a $100 travel voucher if that would satisfy you guys, be you know, to watch your guy. Because now that I yeah. know what yeah, occurred, that. and now that I understand why it is, you know, you guys were in the impression that your plane was here, so... Well, I appreciate that. I could have been quicker, and he should have taken the customer's word. I, I felt really badly that, you know, they were inconvenienced like that. You know, I, I, I try not to take it personal, because you can't, and you center yourself and do my yoga and karma. <laughs> At LAX, Christine waits to board her flight to Tulsa and get out of Los Angeles for good. I hate LA. I don't like the people. How long have you been here? My whole life. Oh. Surprisingly enough, but like I have experienced Tulsa for maybe a couple times, and it's just really mellow, and I just, I want to go. And probably my makeup still down my face, but I don't care. <laughs> I just want to go. Spirits fly high on airline, as it gets too much for one passenger. I don't know. Why should I like to fly? Tempers flare at LAX. Where are you from? No, it does matter, because I'm going to beat the f out of you when I get a chance. And there's a mysterious passenger at Midway. So you have an invisible wife that nobody can see, but you is what you're telling me, right? It's April Fool's Day, and the Jokers are out in force. I'm a comedian, so I'm out here auditioning for the new Jamie Foxx show, so I got Pete to come back. At LAX, passenger Ricky Smiley has a trick up his sleeve. I'm going to tell him I have cataracts where I can pre-board while I don't have to stand in line. If I put the shades on the wrong way in my work, then see how I put it on the Tell him I have a cat right here. See what happens, you know. I have advanced cataract. I might need a pre-board. Last time I tried to get on the plane by myself and got on the wrong flight. Let me know. We'll okay. go directly to gate number 14 with this. Okay, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. I, I didn't see you. Thank you so much. Do you know, where to, do you know your direction? Greg? Right? No. Just which way? Yeah. Greg? Do, you know your, do you know your direction to the gate? Which way? Where is it? It's going to be down behind you to your left. This way, this gate? For this flight right here? 1818? Yeah, flight 1818. Okay. Okay. Huh? okay. Thank you. All right. I'm on the tour flight. Hey, sometimes I get a wheelchair, man, you know. And sit there. <laughs> I love this airline. <laughs> Third 
degree advanced cataract. <laughs> Get to sit with the senior citizen, baby. We're gonna be playing Scrabble. <laughs> I'm telling your eye fell out. I told them my toes fell off. Just anything, they go for it. It worked every time. I love Southwest Airlines. Number one. You're number one, Southwest. <laughs> Over at Midway, Shadia is trying to hold it together. Let me get this straight. I'm not trying to make fun of you, Paul. Where's your wife at? She is right here. Your wife is right there. She's right here. Philadelphia passenger Paul has requested a pre-board pass for his wife. And Linda's right here. Yes, yeah, she's standing right here. There's no one over there, sir. The only problem is, where is she? People say that they don't see her, they don't talk to her, whatever. She has a confidence about her, too. How would you feel if people didn't act like they couldn't talk to you at all? How did you get a boarding card for her? I checked in at the self-check-in. We so always check in at the self-check-in. So you never sent anyone her ID? No. Does she have an ID? Well, she has her ID, but you have to ask her. That's for her. OK. Well, Linda, can I see your ID? She left it in her bag. It's in her bag. Can she go get it from her bag? We went ahead and checked that stuff in. When we you come in, we... her bag in. OK. Yes. I don't understand what the big deal is. Why? I can't just get a boarding pass. OK, you have a boarding card for her. I mean, if you purchase the ticket for this person that you're claiming is standing next to you, that's perfectly fine. But unfortunately, you don't qualify for pre-boarding. She's not someone with a disability. She has no disabilities. How do I know that you're not crazy if you're saying that you can't see her? Because I can't see her. Val, do you see anyone there? No, I don't. All right, how do I know that all you... I'm flying on a plane with you guys. You so guys am are, I whoa, standing? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my god. I need an ice pack. You just stepped on her freaking foot. You stepped on her foot. God. What the hell are you laughing at? I need an ice pack now. Okay, sir, calm. I need an ice pack. So, okay, calm I need, down. Get Man, EMT, paramedic, something. Man. I need a freaking ice pack. Okay. You just stepped on her damn foot. Oh, sir, if you don't calm down, they're going to call the police here. I'm going to try to assist you as much as possible. Just give me like two seconds. I, I, I know. She's freaking crying over here. Give me a damn ice pack and some aspirin. Back at LAX, Ricky is on a roll. Cabaret. Cabaret. That's all right. Congratulations. Thank you. Take care. All right. You're good to go. Sweet. Straight down. Open seating wherever you want. Man, my eyesight. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Have a nice day. All right. Thank Take care. So much. Wanna... All right. <laughs> Going home to Sweet Home, Alabama. Bye, Southwest Airlines number one. Ricky may have pulled one over on them, but at Midway, seeing isn't believing. I constantly hear the screaming in my ears. Half of it's screaming from her getting hurt because somebody stepped on her. The other half the time, she's screaming because she won't shut the hell up. Why is she yelling? Because you stepped on her foot. Can you tell her I'm sorry? Because I, I didn't see anyone Can there. Can you tell her you're sorry? I'm sorry. I don't see anyone standing there. So unless you explain it to me, just give us a few minutes until we can work with the manager here. We just called Eric because I don't, at this point, I don't, just don't think he's even fit to travel because Let's say he's holding an MTC for on the aircraft and someone decides to sit there, he might have a breakdown on the aircraft. So we have to wait for Eric to make the final decision. You have an imaginary wife. Pardon me? You do have an imaginary wife. How do you not see her? She's air. She's not air, she's right there. I talked to her just the same as I'm talking to you, little girl. He paid for two tickets, one for him and one for his wife. He has Linda on here, who's his wife, and I don't know what to say. How long does it take for a manager to get done? Eric's on his way, but how will he deal with Paul's invisible wife? At Houston, love is in the air for Joe Fife. He's here to meet a long distance date. I'm waiting on Selena. I met her online about a little over two years ago. And uh, we started chatting online and then Start talking on the phone okay, and doing, so we'll be fine, boy, now, decided five, five, to get together, eight, so eight, seven, 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 that's why I'm here. Then I said, you know, we've been talking for a couple of years, so, so you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I think it'll, I think it'll, uh, thing will work out at least, at least for two weeks. Just ready to, <laughs> to meet her. It's their first face-to-face -face encounter. I heard it was on the ground, so. But there's no sign of Selena. 
It looks a little lonely around here right now. Could Joe be the victim of a hoax? At LAX, passengers Jonathan and Matt have arrived too late for their Oakland flight. All right, what are we going next? All right, well, we're going to go ahead and put you on the standby list because the next flight is full so for the four or five. Do you guys checked in way early. Well, were you? Yeah, we were sitting at the we bar. We were sitting at the bar? Waiting. Waiting, waiting to hear something. Let's see your morning pass. Yes. Okay, this is going to happen, guys. All right. If you're afraid to be under the influence of alcohol, we can't let you fly. Oh, By the way, we'll no. cancel our flight and get on another one if you, if you feel that way. No, it's the policy that we have that we have to enforce. Seriously. That, uh, see, here's the problem. So, so it's, there's it's a not even an issue. You've really got to be kidding at this point. We have one margarita. We're sitting here waiting for our flight for an hour. You about the policy I understand that, but if you think that we're drunk, that's ridiculous. Okay, wow. I, I'm just telling you that, and I don't mean to be abrasive, but if you're really going to... I mean, when, when you came up... I mean, I don't know Stop how much it. you've had you to know, drink. I don't, I don't care what you say right now. Just make it happen. Let's okay. get on a flight. We're cool. We're kind know. of flying Southwest out of default here for a funeral of a friend. And why are you doing this? You can bring a breathalyzer. Are you kidding me? You're going to cancel our flight? Yeah, I'm going to have to. Oh that's, oh, that's right. Where are you from? Where are you from? Matter. That doesn't matter. No, it does matter, because I'm going to beat the out of you when I get a chance. Okay. Right now. Let's go. Because you're a punk. What? You are a so punk. what do we need to do? You're a stupid wow. little punk. I hope I recognize her when I see her. <laughs> I think I will. Back in Houston, Joe Fife's still looking for his online love. She weighs about 95 pounds, and I think she's about 5'4". She's not tiny. But, uh, the long dark hair. I thought I heard this. 49 was on the ground in just Let's see. It's in the gate at 722. If they check baggage, they'll be coming right down here, sir. Joe sits tight for what could be the woman of his internet dreams. Over in L.A., Matt and Jonathan are still far from happy. We'll do whatever we want to do. Well, what can we do to, to, to wow. displace that? That's your fly. You know what? I'd love to beat the yeah. out of you, you little I bet you're a little guy on the bus that got beat up all the time, didn't you? You're a gross little pig, aren't you? it's okay. It's just... You're a little pig. Enough is enough. Steve alerts now? security. Hey, macho guy. Yeah. Talk to uh, the camera. Yeah. He's working out, actually. So. Let me, let, I'll call you on the radio. Okay, bye. Well, he got very aggressive. He started calling me names and you know, telling me that I was the guy on the bus, that I was got his ass kicked. And you know, at the point, it was funny. But uh, I was a little concerned, too, because it did seem like he really wanted to jump with the good counter and you know, do whatever he wanted to do. Go ahead and give a refund to the ticket. I'd appreciate Technically, that. Um, we can let you fly it up to eight hours from when this happens. So we have a flight Believe late me, tonight. Believe me, alcohol isn't an issue. We're just going to go get a another flight. But will any other carriers be flying to Oakland today? Back at Midway, manager Eric arrives at gate B3 and gets the lowdown from Shadia. He needs to pre-board because his wife needs, his wife gets stamped on. Okay. So I asked him where his wife is, and his wife is invisible. Her name is Linda. So That's what I, he said? When I went to go over there to see her, he's claiming I stamped on her toe and is demanding an ice pack. So Carrie just went to get an ice pack. For his invisible wife? His wife, wife was sitting on the floor. You're kidding me. She's right there on the floor, sitting down. So, Is this some kind of a joke? <laughs> no, I wish it was. Are you sure? Here's the ice pack. This is all we have. Put that on her foot right now. Do you have towel? I could get you paper towel. Can we get, can I get sure. paper towel? What's up? So, I want to get on the pre-board, mm -hmm. right? I want to get over there so I can get on there earlier. 
Same thing like, like you almost said, you almost stepped on her. This young lady right here just stepped on my wife's foot and she's screaming that her toe is broken. I need to get on the airline. Don't, please. Okay, please well, don't you know, I don't know what to tell you. I really am at a loss for words. I, I really don't know what to say. So you have an invisible wife that nobody can see, but you is what you're telling me, right? Back in Houston, Joe gets the call he's been waiting for. Hello, are you there yet? That's where I'm at. Oh, there. I see you hang up. There you are. Right here, right behind you. <laughs> Hi! How you doing? Oh! How are you doing? 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 How I'm fine, baby. I thought you might need something else to carry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Joe and Selena head off to start their romance offline. At Baltimore Washington International, Sue Lee has her eagle eye on two Jackson bound passengers. Thank you. Hello? She suspects Mr. and Mrs. Geist may have been drinking. Thank you. And they're not being too discreet about it. I am still aboarding Group A for Flight 1057 to Jackson, uh, flight on into Houston. It's time to board the flight, but will it go without a hitch? Okay, and we're A's? Okay, A's, welcome B's. Sorry about that. Sorry. Thanks. Sue Lee bides her time before she springs into action. How are you? Have a good night. Thank you. Well, we're going to go find out what's in their glass. I need you both to come off the plane with me, please. Come on. I need you to get your belongings and let's go. Looks like the Geists have got some explaining to do. <laughs> Over at LAX, Jonathan and Matt's earlier behavior has cost them dearly. That guy, I hope he loses his job. The only other flight out all down. It's only southwest that flies to Oakland, which is where your car is. Fine, leave it there. I know, so I said we won't fly, fly southwest but ultimately there's an 820 with United. Southwest has banned us and we've banned them as well, so that's a very mutual thing. <laughs> and the only other person well, that flies to Oakland works, where we left though. the car is United, and that's an 820 flight. I'm, I'm really hoping that we fly home tonight. Um, got a woman that I'm waiting for that I was supposed to come home yesterday and extend it another day, but I, I'm worried that we might not even fly out till tomorrow. Let's get the flipping <laughs> presidential palace at the flipping whatever. At the Lowe's. Let's do it. <laughs> it's on. Apparently. You betcha. I don't care, Mr. Southwest. We don't care. We don't care. We don't care. We don't care. <laughs> Meanwhile, at BWI, Sue Lee confronts Mr. and Mrs. Geist. First of all, you both appear to be intoxicated. We are. We've been here five hours. Okay. We need a labor. You're not allowed to walk around with, with alcohol. Well, we're not going to tell who gave it to us. Well, that's and we're not, not the issue. But unfortunately, I don't have any more flights tonight. Sheesh. Well, of course not. So we have to rebook you for tomorrow. <laughs> it's been the hardest day. But unfortunately, can't let you fly. Okay. Okay, yeah. understood. What else you get? Understood. Sorry. Nothing. I mean, just so you understand. See you later. Well, we need to get See you, you bye. To get you off the aircraft. <coughs> we missed our flight by five minutes because of security stuff in Norfolk. Put us here for seven hours, sitting here trying to get to Mississippi. You can consume alcohol on the aircraft as long as it's given to them by the 
flight crew, but you can't take your own air, you know, your own liquor on and drink it. So, and you can't go on with an open container like that. After the beers come the tears. I don't like the fly. <laughs> Well, it's like I'm sitting in the airport today watching of an accident over in New Jersey. They crashed into the warehouse. I don't know. Why should I like the fly? They didn't stop me at the door saying, no, you cannot have beverages or anything. They just... We've been here for seven hours, so... Yeah. Anyway. What, do you think I'm not going to have a beverage? It's not like you have a bowling alley or a movie theater or anything. You screw me up through security and leave me sitting here for hours? If they don't want me on their airline, I'm not going to be on their airline. <laughs> Fine, if it takes me 18 hours to drive there, I will. It's OK. Mr. and Mrs. Geist called it a day and took the first flight to Jackson the next morning. At Midway, Eric has to make a tough decision. Well, what do we consider a disability? I guess not all disabilities are physical, so we can uh, let you freeboard. I just want to make sure you're going to be OK once you're on board the airplane. Yeah, I'll be fine as long as nobody else starts messing around with me or do does anything like that. Uh, yeah, everything is good. Thank you very much. Now do I need just water right there? Well, she stopped yelling. At least that's freaking better. That's part of what the is. Eric's been the victim of an elaborate April Fool's joke. <laughs> Thank you so much. They got me. But do I still have a job? Okay. <laughs> that was a joke. That's okay. Shadia okay. thought of the whole point. Yeah. So the invisible wife. We asked the passenger to help us out with this joke, and uh, we made him have an invisible wife. I thought it was a joke at first, and then the longer I talked to him, I just thought he was really disturbed. He was a great actor. He's not a shy man, that's for sure. You need an ice pack for your head now. Is it hurting you? I just didn't know how I was going to handle that. You know, how do you handle that? Your invisible wife. At LAX, Matt still hasn't quite finished speaking his mind. I had an attitude. It's kind of like one of those guys that sit at a guard gate. You know what I mean? They sit there and they love their power. If you don't have a pass, you ain't getting in, even though your mom is living there. It was threatening people. It was threatening that he wanted to hurt someone. You know, and that, 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 just that alone, even if you were not drunk, that's not going to get you on a flight. We're leaving the terminal. Probably not going to do the 8 o'clock flight out of the United. We'll leave tomorrow. We'll try to get tomorrow. We're gonna, yeah, we're going to stay another day. I'm a social drinker. I like having a good time. And I realize that people, after they have so many drinks, they turn into different persons. And that's something that we, as tour just have to deal with. We'll never fly Southwest again. We will never, ever, and I fly it all the time, ever again. Um, I don't know. I, I, thought, I don't believe him. I think he's going to be on Southwest again. And probably, with my luck, I'll probably check him in tomorrow or next week. It's a battle of wills on airline, with one man's struggle to get to El Paso. I want to go home. This is the thanks that I get. A woman fighting her emotions in Reno. I literally used it to wrap up and hold and cry. And a man on the warpath in Chicago. This is prejudice. Yeah, it is. I'm being treated unfairly. Discrimination. Now you've got me mad. Chicago Midway, Angel's been called to handle a dispute between two passengers. The lady's jumped in front of me. I told her to get out from front of me. 
come on where? I, I told him that I stepped in front of you. There you go. I don't appreciate this at all. Seems the woman in question has a bee boarding card. But as the bees had already boarded, she stepped in line ahead of the other passengers in the sea line. Excuse me, I'm not invisible. I paid the same ticket she paid. She could just jump in front of me and act like I don't exist. Ken West and his fiance have sea boarding passes. Me. Let me get this off my chest. I'm not invisible. She jumped in front of me. I asked her that was very rude. I don't appreciate it. So then she turned around and started cussing me out. Okay? I didn't do nothing. So then she turned around and cussed me out some more. I said, I, I think you need to go somewhere else. So then she stepped out of the line. Now all this is because of that? Okay, what did I do? You don't have to yell, sir. We, we just Excuse me, I'm here. upset. Okay, well that lady over there is kind as well. We had witnesses. I don't understand this. Excuse you me. You didn't call her over here and interrogate her? Okay, she was very upset. About what? Okay, so about about getting in front of me minutes. and cussing me out? Sir. Okay. All right, I'm sorry. I'm insulted. Okay. And I need the, 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 the apology somewhere around here. I'm a paying customer, ain't I? Where are you trying to go to? Las Vegas, home. Okay, and you're on this. Let me see the next flight. Why do I have to have a next flight? I can't let you board on this flight. Why? Because right now, a lot of people are intimidated and frightened of him. Because what the people way, are intimidated shouting? and frightened? Okay, I'm not going to go into names or anything. You know what? My know brother is people. a police officer. Do I need to call him? This is ridiculous. I don't know. If they, well, no, let me just say one thing. Let me say one thing. If he does not fly, that woman better not be on the plane either. Wait, wait, I this is simple as that. Lady that cussed me out, jumped in front of me. I asked her not to do it. She got out of the way. Now I can't fly home. He's upset because he's a little louder than this one. This woman went off. Oh, hell no. And There's food and all in this bag. Whoa. At Baltimore Washington International, TJ inspects a bag containing some tiny stowaways. Oh, look at them all. Look at that. going out or No, TSA just sent it over. Somebody just checked it upstairs. All kinds of dried food and a whole ant colony, apparently. Oh, oh man. Dang. Yeah, this ain't going. I can't go. The whole bag's not gonna be able to go if there's ants in it. Put the whole bag in this There's bag. There's like hundreds of them in there. Here. They're now down in the gate area to go and get the passengers to come down and get the bag because obviously the bag can't go. If we don't get a hold of them, they'll go to Chicago and their bag, I guess, will just stay right here with us. So. In Seattle, Bonnie Walsh Ward is embarking on an emotional journey. You have a good time, all right? Thank we'll you. see you later. Have a okay, good one. Okay, appreciate it. My first husband was a captain, David W. Walsh, who served in Vietnam and was an infantry company commander, basically grunts, out in the field for six months when he was killed. Bonnie is reuniting the remaining members of her husband's division in Reno, 35 years after they served together in Vietnam. We now have about 150 people coming, and this is the largest gathering of a rifle company. Bonnie's hoping the veterans will help her get back something she lost after her husband's funeral. You know that there's this phrase, you're gonna wrap yourself in the flag? That's it, what I did. And it wasn't one of these, you know, rah, rah patriotism. I literally used it to wrap up a hole and cry. Well, I couldn't revolt it. So I brought it and the guys are gonna refold it for me. Back in Chicago, Angels called Karen for backup. Okay, this gentleman's upset because he said a lady in line jumped in front of him. She wasn't in line and she jumped in front of me. Okay. Now I'm being okay. escorted out and I can't get my flight home. Okay. Because of what you say, somebody says I'm intimidating. Okay. Yeah, I'm mad. Somebody cussed me out because, in public. Because you were louder than she was, but I okay. guess they didn't say anything about when she threatened his life and called him. Okay. A
Let me remind you what happened first. First things first, sir, you need to calm down because we do not transport customers that, you know, appear to be a threat to the flight or anything like that. You need to calm down. Let me find out from Angel. If this what woman happened. gets on the plane, y'all gonna have some trouble with me. Sir, you're, you can't get on the plane after like this, so you need to calm down. Okay, well, if I'm not getting on the plane, then the person that started this mess cannot get on the plane. I don't have any consequences. I ain't did nothing wrong. Okay, well, let me find out what's happened so far. She stepped in front of him, and he got upset, so he went off on her. And that's the yeah, I got, that's what happened. I had asked, I said, are you in A, B, or C loading? And he said, C, and I said, okay. And then I just got in front of him, because I thought, because so, I'd asked the guy in front of him, are you in A, B, or C, and he said, B. And I said, okay, so if he's a C, then he's a B, then I go right here. And that's what happened. Okay, did you exchange words with him at that point, Ari? I said, I'm sorry. Is what I said to him, and he just started talking. I'm at that, you know. We're, we're going to see how he is if he calmed down, and we're going to look up the next flight to see if it's available. Back at BWI, TJ's now at the gates in search of the owner of the ant infested bag. Still haven't gotten them, so we're going to go see if we can track them down. I'm going to make an announcement in the bar, see if they might be hanging out in there. Any Mercs in here? Anybody need a Merc? So what are you trying to say? My mouth is bigger than yours? Pretty much, yeah. No luck there. We got the boarding path deleted, so until pretty much when they try to board the plane, it's going to pop up that they don't have a boarding pass. At that point, we can pretty much intercept them at the gate there and find out what they want to do with the contents of the bag. Because as of right now, that bag is definitely not going. Initially, they thought you were on their flight, and I think you thought you were on their flight. At LAX, Yolanda's been called to help a confused passenger. It was scheduled at, at 6, at 6.55, I at think. At 6.55? Because no, the only ticket that it. you have here, I have, I have what you're looking for. The only ticket that you have here is for 8.55. The, he changed that. I, w I would have been, been here at that time. No, it's 8.55 tonight. You still have time. Because right. I, had a, I have a lot of time. Right. I have a lot of time. I, I, I have time to I use. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, I could have been at home eating and, and all of that, you know, right. and, and having a good time. But now I'm here stuck. At BWI, TJ's search continues for the owner of the ant-infested bag. First name is Mert, M-E-R-T. Spell the last name, Ustunal, U-S-T-U-N-U-N-A-L. And out steps Mert, 12 years old and accompanied by his uncle. Mert, did you, ch you check in a bag downstairs? Yeah. Yeah, we're getting ready okay. to go. That bag is filled with ants. They can't go on the plane. Uh-oh. It will not go on the plane. That Something has to be done with that bag before Okay, it, can I, it can go. Take it with you, me. You, you can take it with you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And we'll go ahead. And, yeah, we're getting ready. Okay. Mert's Turkish, and his grandmother came from Turkey two or three days ago. He was visiting, and he's going back to Chicago. So she brought from Turkey je homemade jelly and nuts and a lot of food for him to take back to his parents. Obviously, it had ants in it. So if you want to go on down, you're all set. All right. See you later. Have a good trip. See you. Bye. Have a good one. Mert boards, minus his grandmother's Turkish delights. In Chicago, Karen tells Ken West and his fiance their options. Um, it appears as though um, Whatever happened over there was it wasn't any more anyone's fault that I guess she asked you what group you were going into and you said C or and she tried to I guess cut in front of you. She didn't try, she walked okay. and stepped she in front the, okay. of me. And he just said get away from I'm me. I'm not gonna be disrespected. Yeah. Okay, I'm a hard working man. I, I don't break no laws. I ain't got no business being treated like this. Okay? Okay. But we, sir, we have to make a decision based on what we feel comfortable your situation is at okay, this now, point. We have not been able to you, reason with you or talk to you without you yelling you, and screaming at us. If you want to help me, then you get her over here. 
Okay. For what? The only reason, she can't catch the flight for, okay. for me. Your reaction, to, and from what Andy and the ops agent witnessed, your reaction after all this is what we have to deny you boarding for, not what happened in the little altercation between two customers. The Excuse way me, we, if you were being detained because you did nothing wrong, would you be happy about okay. it? Well, I have a choice right now, sir, to either deny you boarding for the day or to put you on the next flight, depending on how we're going to handle the situation Then I guess you need today. to make your decision. Okay, and okay. I, I need your cooperation to make the decision. If what this, do you want me to do? I just need you to... Tie me up, put me in handcuffs, no, I just need shut you. me up. No, I just need you to I'm a down. bolsterous person. I've always been that my okay. whole life. Well, if you're going to continue to be that way, sir, I can't transport you to Las Vegas today. That's the, that's what I need you to do. Then I will just have me. to get my lawyer then, my because this is not acceptable. Okay. Not at all. <laughs> in Reno, Bonnie's Alpha Company reunion is underway. I know you just said, Bonnie, is that you? <laughs> Many are meeting for the first time since serving together in Vietnam 35 years ago. We swore to one another years ago if we ever got out of this place alive, we'd try to get in touch with one another again and have a reunion. Well, that dream for me is finally becoming a reality. Oh, oh well, thank you for looking for me. Bonnie's Thank husband led trying. the division and made an impression on all the men, including company chaplain Max Sullivan. What I know about Bonnie, she gave us her best, her husband. No, Max. He's he, was a great, he was a great commander. And I happened to be there at the time that he was killed. And of course, didn't know Bonnie until several months ago. Mm -hmm. But since then, she's a super gal. He was such a bigger than life individual that was uh, really a favorite to all the people in the field because he he was more concerned about keeping everybody safe and alive than he was about whatever it was that people above would want him to do you know I feel without them I wouldn't have felt whole and for them to honor me with such kind words and such tributes okay. back at LAX passenger George Washington is still confused about the time but now Yolanda wonders whether he should fly at all you determined that he'd smelled like alcohol and uh, I didn't so really smell it I mean okay. it just started being loud and okay. he just looked to me to be under the influence of okay. something okay thank you you're welcome <laughs> Okay, so I did What's check your well, I did check your reservation, and um, uh oh, my concern is what I'm trying to determine now is whether or not you're fit for travel because of sort of the conversation you've had with the captain and the office uh, agent. This 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 gentleman, I, I had no problem with him at all, any which way. Okay. I'm a military man. All I told him was, look, I work real hard for this country and this is the thanks I get. Is that what you were saying? You're injured from and you're just coming back from Afghanistan. Afghanistan. And this is the thanks I get? Here's what I have to determine. Phoenix, Phoenix, El Paso, anyway. All I do all I do I wanna make my final destination. Yeah, I think That's all I want. I wanna go home. I already been everywhere. This is the thanks that I get. Well, I'm certainly not trying to to put any undue stress on you. I want to go you. home. That's I all. And I want to get you home, sir. If your flight doesn't leave till 8:55, I want to take you over okay. to the gate. Thank you very much. Okay. He, he's just really upset. I mean, he's just come back from the war. He's injured. Um, obviously, home means a lot to him right now, which I can totally understand. Little does Yolanda know, not everything is as it seems. If you're not going to come down, if you're not going to just accept you just what keep has happened. Friends at me like I did something wrong. In oh, Chicago, I can't, I can't, things are at a stalemate with Ken and his fiance. Put my shoes on. I cannot put you on board. Put my shoes on. Somebody telling you they're going to take you, not let you go home because 
if you they're telling you you can't get on your flight. Right. If you continue to act the way that you're acting, yes, I cannot transport you on there. I cannot put you on an airplane with flight attendants serving you and serving other customers. I cannot put you on there knowing they that this is the They didn't do nothing way wrong to me. Just the people that I do me that wrong. I are having a difficult time even trying to talk to you. The you won't even get the woman off the plane. The captain has made the decision. And she gets to get on the plane and so somebody me. else. Wait a minute. If he cries, will he get, big, get to go on the plane no. too? No. If he cries, I bet he can cry no. too. Whatever the ops agent Andy witnessed, or he, they, they told this the This is prejudice. Yes, it, it is. is. I'm being it's treated up. Discrimination. Right, now you've got me mad. Okay, well we have to. We're going to have to deny this. Point. Okay. No. Yes. This no. is this is unacceptable. Who is your manager? Excuse me. He was just. He couldn't get past the fact that he was being denied boarding on this flight, and the other customer was not. Based on what the ops agent observed firsthand, the ops agent felt what he witnessed that that customer, the gentleman, didn't did need to be denied boarding, and the lady did not. All I did was tell the lady that was a rude move. That's all I did, and I wasn't even allowed. Now they're telling me they might not, might not even be able to fly out of here today. There was just no reasoning, reasoning with him, and that we just need to deny him boarding for the night, which is a very difficult decision. We never want to, you know, disrupt somebody's flight like that. But I just felt it was in the best interest of the customers, you know, that would be traveling tonight. In Virginia City, Nevada, Bonnie is taking a moment away from the reunion to reflect on memories of her husband, David. Last night before going to Vietnam, he left his school ring, his college, Lafayette College ring, in uh, my purse. And he just simply wrote me a letter while he was flying to Vietnam that said, by now you will have found the ring I left. When I get back, I'd either like to have it back or exchange it for another. In either case, please take care of it. And so I considered that somewhat of a proposal. Shortly after they married, David went on his second tour as a captain of Alpha Company. That company was everything to David. It was his job, it was a responsibility. The people, the men in it, they trusted one another. They gave their lives for one another. They took bullets for one another. And he was as much a part of me, and I became a part. And to finally meet these people, and to be able to say, thank you for being such good soldiers. And thank you for remembering your dead buddies, including my husband. Thank you for being that band of brothers. Bonnie heads back to the reunion in Reno, where her husband's burial flag will at last be refolded. At LAX, Yolanda's got George to the right gate, but decides to make one final call before boarding him. Hi, are you um, George Washington's, you're his dad? Okay, I just wanted to make sure he seems um, really upset and he's traveling with us today on Southwest Airlines. <laughs> um, well, he just seems to be a little bit upset. He was crying and seems to be, did he just come back from Afghanistan? Uh-huh, what happened? I think I've been had. <laughs> His dad said he fell off a roof and had to get a hip replacement because he fell. That's not funny, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that he's um, not been in the military. <laughs> I was like near tears thinking he was a war veteran, but apparently, according to his family, he just fell off a roof. They say George Washington never told a lie, but in L.A., anything's possible. In Reno, the remaining members of Alpha Company line up again 35 years since serving together in Vietnam. Bonnie finally experiences the flag-folding ceremony she's been waiting for. PFC Jerry Douglas Clark, April 11, 1968. Staff Sergeant Wayne Clifton Sears, May 7, 1968. TFC Roger Allen Fesident, May 7, 1968. TFC Burl Denton Hewitt, May 13, 1968. Very happy for the United States. God bless you. Stop. January 18, 1969.
Seriously, it's, it's just um very. I didn't think I'd cry again, but just to have it done right and with the uh, people standing, I thought we were going to do it back in the hall with such a sense of it was to all the men. Love is in the air on airline. <laughs> From a secret admirer for Anita. When I see a beautiful lady, ooh, stand out to me. I say, ooh. To a friendship put to the test. Ivan, I've been listening to what you've been saying. Hold on, Ivan. We're not going to do this in front of the passengers. To a surprise proposal at 30,000 feet. Will you marry me? From passionate goodbyes to emotional reunions, the airport is a great place for romance. At LAX, in the International Terminal, flight attendant Heather Hale waits for her overseas boyfriend. I am waiting for my sweetheart to arrive from Switzerland. Um, it's been two and a half months since I've seen him, so I'm getting kind of the butterflies in the stomach are starting to come, and uh, hopefully it's going to be kind of a life-altering vacation for us both, so. Heather doesn't know how right she is. She and boyfriend Chris are flying to Salt Lake City, and he has a very special surprise in store. I'm going to propose to my girlfriend on the flight from so uh, L.A. to Salt Lake City, and she doesn't know, she doesn't have any clue. I'm a cabinet maker, so I made this box by myself. Uh, it says the date on it, and then it says also LAX-SLC, because it's going to be on the flight. So. Getting butterflies in my stomach, getting my little flags out to greet him, but I know what to expect, but still, you just can't help wondering how they're going to react, how I'm going to react. In Chicago, ex-model and the supervisor Anita Herbert has swapped the catwalk for the concourse. You doing okay, Didi? Well, she does look really, really nice all the time. Um, she always got her toes done, her nails done, her hair done. But she likes to catch the eye to me, and she holds her shoulders back, heads up, and she's like, yes, dear, and honey. It's just the way she walks and carries herself, her strut, her confidence. That's what we call her, Miss <laughs> At the ticket desk, Anita deals with a passenger who has turned up late for his flight to Jackson. What time is it late? You only have 10 minutes. I know. Where have you been? Want to try to make it or? Yeah. I... OK. Come on. OK, we're going to go through this way, OK, to try to avoid look some of the lines. Yeah, you know, I don't work out. <laughs> Right here, be that. You gotta go to the counter, baby. Go ahead. Well, I'm glad I got picked because I wouldn't have made it without him. That's all I need. That's all you need. This is your return ticket. I got Andy. Thank you, baby. Mr. Watson makes his flight in just 10 minutes from check in to boarding. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Checking his bag and all that. That's pretty good. So we were pretty fast in this situation. At the gate, 19-year-old student Ryan is desperate to get to New York. 
he's traveling on a space available pass, which allows him to fly free, but only if there's any spare seats. Just trying to go see my girlfriend for the weekend, have all the time off of work, and just have a standby ticket that I'm not having any luck with this morning. So. I understand. Flight pretty much shot, though. It's the one I'm checking right now. The problem with that one, the flight is full out of Baltimore. There's a chance it gets pulled off. It's going to be going out of gate B18. Straight up, that would be my best shot that flight. Um, I wouldn't say that flight looks really good. It looks like everything is full. Thank you. I appreciate all your help. Sorry. That's all right. Thanks. If I don't get to go see her now, then it probably won't be for several months till I get to see her again. So this is kind of the last, you know, last chance to go see her before she goes away to school. He's sitting there. He'll just kind of hang in the gate area with us and keep checking in with us. And we'll just make sure we just keep updating him, let him know what's going on. The hardest part of being a supervisor is handling complaints about your staff. And today, Susie has been called to investigate a problem that a passenger has had with one of her agents. Riker wants to speak to Scott. You right here. Hi, I'm Susie. How can I help you? Susie, I'm John Zelmer. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah, I just paid for a full fare ticket. Come here. He said he doesn't have enough time to put me on the flight. So it was a poor judgment call. I expect to write a very intense letter. OK, what's your name again? John Zelmer. John. OK, John, I'll be right back there for you. Me. Ivan. Procedure is to close the doors of a plane two minutes before departure time. Ivan didn't follow the rules and has now left the gate area. Hey, Ivan, it's Susie. What happened? What time do we close our flights here? No, we don't. Who told you that? We close our flights two minutes before departure. Who told you we close three minutes before departure? Ivan, you can't make up your own rules. You do owe it to your passengers to allow them to get on the flight until two minutes before departure. And you didn't do this for him. Ivan, calm down, OK? Ivan, I'm not, Ivan, we're not. I don't care. You do that. That's the service we give to these passengers. Ivan, I'll come down there and talk to you, but I have to talk with John. A face-to-face -face confrontation awaits. Anita deals with a whole lot of situations each day, but her biggest problem is to fend off an army of admirers. Today, it's George Quinn traveling from Chicago to Omaha. She's just beautiful, and look what she did after seeing her for a couple of minutes. Oh, man, I'm bowled over. George has been trying to catch Anita's eye for the last 15 minutes. I looked over and saw that ring. You married, aren't you? No, I'm not. You know? I'm divorced. You might not like older men, though. I don't think I've ever dated anybody over 45. I tell you what. You tell What's the advantage? Huh? What's I'll the show advantage? I'll show you. You call me, we, we get together. Let's change now. I'm going to give you my telephone. You give me yours. You give me yours. I'll give you mine. OK, that's fine. You got a pad? I don't have a pad. No, I don't. I don't have to write on this. Well, you you may have to write on that. OK. All right, George. Thank you. OK. One bad lady. George, quick. Over at the ticket desk, 60 prize winners of a radio station competition gather for a trip to Florida. And we won an August Smith's trip from B-96 to Killer V. We're happy about this. It's going to be a riot. They are a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. DJs are Eddie and Jovo. Really fun guys. I like them. This is going to be my first time meeting them, too, so I'm a fan as well. All right, hello, winners. How you guys doing? Woo-woo! <laughs> 
Aren't y'all excited? Orlando, first time have you been before? No, first time. First time. Let me do a cartwheel for you. No, <laughs> just kidding. All right, let's get you guys started. As V checks in the competition winners, the DJs are nowhere to be seen. I don't think they've gotten here yet, the DJs. I haven't seen them. I have their tickets, too, so. But the DJs checked in outside and are already at the gate. V's Mr. Chance to say hello. Is anybody here from the world's most dangerous audience? Huh? Yeah. We have the crew here of Girls Gone Wild. We need three women over 18. Three women. Three women over 18. The rest of you, I apologize for what you're about to see on this plane. <laughs> In L.A., Susie prepares for a confrontation. Ivan has just refused to board a passenger, even though he turned up on time. I'm sighing a lot just because, you know, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. Sorry. What you need is to make sure everything we do, we do fine again. Many, many times before. I'm almost going to do it again. Okay. Again. Who told you that we close our flights three minutes before departure? Who? I have Ivan? my butt shoe because Hold of that. Ivan. We're not going to do this in front of the passengers. We're going to do this. What difference is made? Five, ten seconds. Uh, yeah, by the time I do all that, it's going to be 58. I'm not going to put him on the, on the, I know, on the plane. I know. Okay. What difference is made? It you makes, already had a body pass. It makes the passengers. You know how long it takes to. to Ivan, to I've been listening it. to what you've been saying. How long have you been here? How, how long have you thought that we close flights three minutes before departure? You know what? I don't care. Until 58, I'm going to be deleting boarding passes. Ivan, don't make, it, don't make it this. No, because, it, because it's... You're making this, is, this even more than it, it is. me off, so see, Even if I do it at Ivan, zero, zero, it will still not take it away. Please, please, you need to understand that we're in this business for the customer. If we don't have them, we don't have anything. <laughs> don't let it. It's not, it's not worth it. That's the way you want it to be. I'll, I'll do it. Ivan, it's not the way I want it to be. It's the way it's done. Go take your break. Sometimes it doesn't come out of my paycheck. It doesn't come out of your paycheck. Jesus Christ. It's here too. Back in Chicago, student Ryan is still on standby. If he doesn't get on a flight, he won't see his girlfriend for three months. All right, Ryan. Attention in the gate area, those passengers waiting for standby for flight 931 with the Baltimore. This flight is now completely full. I gotta make the phone calls. Date everybody. I didn't get on the second flight either. I think I've only got one more chance to get on this other flight. 11.15. Don't lose hope, all right? Talk to you a little bit later. Love you too. She wasn't very happy. It sounds like she's kind of tearing up on me. Back at LAX, Heather and Swiss Chris are on their way to Salt Lake City. I'm pretty nervous about today. It's uh, the first time I'm going to be back in Salt Lake. And on top of things, I'm going to propose to Heather, my girlfriend, in the airplane. So it's going to be maybe in one hour or something. And I'm totally nervous. I didn't sleep well. I think he's nervous because it's his first time back to see all the friends and you know, he's back to his old stomping ground. So. Now it's a few minutes before the flight. We're going to board in a couple minutes. And I'm just nervous as hell. Back in Chicago, Ryan has one more chance of getting to New York. Yes. I did not realize that they had a rollover list from an early Manchester flight, which had priority standby passengers. So there are quite a few standbys in front of you. We're zeroed out, is what they call it, when there's nothing showing nothing. So. Thanks. Okay. Sorry. I don't want to give up yet. I don't want to just, I don't want to go home after this 11.15 flight, but if there's nothing else I can do, then I'll try everything. Good either. Okay. 
So what I'm looking for is if there's any seats available to purchase left on the 1115 flight. 1115 is all sold out. Sunday morning, Sunday evening, all day long. Those are all sold out. Those are all sold out? Yeah. All right. I guess that's all I can do. Okay. Thanks. Back on the flight to Salt Lake City, everything is in place for Chris's big moment. Wow. It's, 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 In Chicago, love is still in the air as passenger George Quinn continues to try and woo Anita. When I see a beautiful lady, ooh, just stand out to me. I say, ooh, that's me. She's number 10. She 10. That's the top of the line. Woo! I say, that's my lady. I don't know if she likes short men or not, but I know she looks good to me. How do I look to you, honey? You look fine, George. Fine. <laughs> Call it, okay? Okay, you gonna do we'll it? see. I said we'll you're gonna see. do it. We'll see. If I don't hit her, I'm gonna be very disappointed. We'll see, George. All right. Okay. Yeah, we'll see. This is my gate here. Okay. I got to go. Okay. See you later, baby. All right, George. You call me. Okay. I'm serious. I just kind of go along with it, but I, I never promise to follow. No. <laughs> so I don't know. It's a little short for me, too. It's a little bit. Back in LA, Susie has to make amends with the passenger who was denied boarding. Hey, John. I got a chance to talk to Ivan. Sure. I mean, I'm glad he's honest enough to tell me the truth, but because he yes. was inconsistent with our policy, you should have been able to get on that flight. Sure. So I wanted to give you um, a $50 travel voucher just because we were inconsistent with our policy. The guy probably had a bad day. Life is like that. People, everybody has a day. If I can, we'll be like a time Yeah. Ready to I'm, take I'm, on the next I'm ready, situation? I'm ready to take on it. That's good. Okay. You like you? Oh, yeah. Whatever I can do to make my agents more comfortable. Uh, Susie, you got good hands. You can huh? feel my nuts? What? You can feel the nuts that I have? Oh, yeah. You're tense. Did you just <laughs> no. I honestly thought you said she knows something. No. <laughs> That's not what I said. We won't go there. It's pronounced the same. It's the English thing. It was in her quest class, so it's not harassment. <laughs> in Chicago, V's favorite DJs, Jobo and Eddie, are on their way to Florida with 60 competition winners. Having missed them at the ticket desk, V is not going to pass by the opportunity again. Hi, we're excited to have you guys. I hear you guys all the time on the radio. You guys are so cool. Oh, we try, we try. So cool. Anytime you want to tune in, 5 to 10, we're always there. And I'm there. I used to be a 5 to 130, so I can relate. Oh, man, sleeping I mean, I know, and I'm up know, at 2.30. I know, you know. Thank yes, you so Susan. much. Thank you. Right. It was all a pleasure, right. pleasure yeah. meeting you. That was cool. I got to meet Eddie and Jobo. That was cool. Pre-boarding? Pre-boarding, yeah, because well, we are small, yeah. small children. Yeah. We're handicapped. There you go. Small children. I think, well, not with me. <laughs> We're going to make some small children now. Yes, yeah, that's right. We you guys run the show on the yeah. airways, but we got these airways in here. We got the seats, baby! We got the seats! Oh! Wow. I like that. Come on, Frankie. We wish we were going, right? Over at the gate, student Ryan has bad news for his girlfriend, Rachel. He has exhausted all possibilities of getting a flight today. Bye. But Rachel's got the solution. Yeah, love you. Bye. 
She wants to drive to Baltimore and pick me up. Baltimore from here. To Baltimore anytime tonight. Anytime Are you tonight. a revenue passenger? Oh, yeah. yeah, but I'm looking into buying a ticket now, just purchasing a ticket and forgetting the whole revenue. Right thing. now I have two seats available to Baltimore at 1240. At 1240? To Baltimore? To Baltimore. She told me she loves going on road trips. So this is, she says she's going to have fun doing this. So here's the deal. Are you absolutely 100% positive that you want to do that? You are. You have no doubts? Like, and you're sure you'll be able to do this? I'll call you back, bye. <laughs> Whew. She's actually gonna drive and come pick me up. She's gonna drive to, from all the way to Baltimore to come pick me up tonight, so. All goes, all goes good, I appreciate all your help. You bet, you bet. <laughs> Finally, it's been a long day. Now off to Baltimore for part two of the trip. We'll see. Meanwhile, back on the Salt Lake City flight. Hi, everybody. Uh, Heather. And today it's my first time I'm gonna go back to Salt Lake and have something very special for my girlfriend today. So uh, um, wish me good luck. Good luck. Take it Heather. Will you marry me? Oh my god. Of course I will. <laughs> 